Hi everyone, welcome to Skype a Scientist Live. Today we're gonna be talking about book author and scientist uh, Danny, uh, and we're gonna be uh, hearing all about farts. So uh, we're super excited. Um, we are, um, so we're a 501c3, we're a nonprofit organization. So if you can help support our mission in any way, that'll be really appreciated either by telling people that you know are stuck at home and looking for something to do or going on patreon.com slash skype a scientist or paypal.me slash skype a scientist all donations are tax deductible because we're a nonprofit. um so uh danny do you want to introduce yourself yeah, fab. So my name's Danny. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Zoological Society of London. So um, I finished my PhD in June of um, last year um, and since started a job there. And um, I, in um, that job, I study the impact of climate change on African wild dogs, but I am also an author, um, which is what I'm here to talk about today. Um, and I've written um, three slash four books we've published now um uh, the first one was does it fart but we've also had so this is the first original version but we've also got a kids version which was out last year super exciting um and then since then we've published true or poo and believe it or not came out um last october awesome um so we have so many fart questions already um i guess let's start with how do people fart so, um, interestingly, I think there's not really a solid definition. This, this was the biggest challenge when we did the book is like, what is a fart? What counts as a fart? Um, and for people, there's kind of two, the medical term would be flatulence. Um, however, the definition for flatulence is quite narrow. Um, and that is gas that's produced during digestion um, that is expelled through the anus. Um, however, a fart is much more than that. So a lot of air that we fart out when it makes a noise, that's actually air that we just swallow and then it goes all the way through our digestive system. Um, so I guess what I'd say is the way that we fart is by either swallowing or producing gas in our stomachs, in our intestines, um, and then it's a fart is when that passes out from the opposite end of our head, as opposed to a burp, which obviously comes back out of our mouth. Uh, so like, what is the difference in the gas compositionally between a fart and a burp? So um, basically a lot more of the gas that we fart out is produced at, at the rear end of our digestive system so that's after the stomach um, so any gas that's produced in your intestine is going to be being farted out we're not going to burp that out that would be quite a quite a long way for it to travel um, although there are some animals uh, who do actually produce a lot of gas in their stomach um, so that means that more of it kind of comes out that end. But yeah, definitely more of the smellier gases, like the sulfurous gases produced in the intestine, which is why burps don't usually, unless you've been eating something a bit gross, smell quite so bad as farts. Um, so are, parts, are farts part of the digestive system? Yeah, they are. They're really important. So if um, you have any problems with your digestive system, you can get wind. I think a lot of people have probably experienced like painful wind pains, um, and that can cause a lot of issues trapped wind. It's really uncomfortable. Um, so it is actually really important that you do fart out that gas. But I would recommend uh, for your social life, maybe not doing too much around other people because they don't appreciate it very much. That is very important. And a uh, hot tip for Americans out there, wind is uh, the dignified, uh, English way of saying fart uh, or <laughs> gas, <laughs> which I didn't know when I was maybe eight. Um, so how are farts made? So yeah, as I've discussed, farts, there's, there's two ways really that the, the, they're made. Um, so we have um, a lot of bacteria um, and other known as gut flora, and they're kind of microorganisms, small microscopic organisms. They live inside our digestive system and they're really important because they help us to break down our food. Um, but when they're helping us to break down our food, what they also um, produce a lot of gas, that's a byproduct of what they're doing. Um, so that's where most of that gas is produced, or quite a lot of it, actually more of it, is just stuff that we're swallowing when we're chewing. Um, so that's the, the two ways that that gas is get into our system, really. Awesome. Um, so I guess that also answered the question, why do we fart? 
because uh, our gut microbes, our bacteria are making it for us. Um, why are farts so funny? So I think th there's a really long history of farts being funny. So for example, the first ever um, song that was recorded in the English language actually notes, um, it actually has a line in it about farting goats. So we know that it's a really long tradition of people finding farts, you know, a little bit hilarious. Um, and I think it's just, you know, they're noisy, they're smelly, they're unexpected a lot of the time. So I think that probably has quite a lot to do with it. There's often a bit of a prank element about fart. You know, there's a lot of, you know, you fart near someone, they're surprised and also horrified. And that's always going to be quite funny to whoever's doing the farting, even if it's less funny for anyone that might be in the vicinity. <laughs> um, do starfish fart? So starfish only really have like one hole, so it's quite hard for them to fart because they have to eat their food and then they also like poo out of the same hole kind of throughout the mouth, which a, a lot of animals do who have quite basic digestive systems. Sea anemones would be another example of that. And when we were writing the book, the, the criteria we had for a fart was that the gas had to come out the opposite end to their mouths. So for animals that only have one hole, that, that's a bit difficult. It's more of a burp really. Um, so I, I would say no, uh, they don't fart. What was your favorite animal to write about in the book? Okay, well, these also don't fart, but definitely sea cucumbers. Like, they have been an ongoing theme throughout all three of the books. They're, they're the one, I think they're the only animal that made it into all three because they were just so disgusting that <laughs> there was something to say about, like, farts and poo and slime, you know. Um, but I, I love sea cucumbers. They, they're just... They have ridiculous amounts going on, especially around their their butts or like their cloak. Sorry, I got distracted by a squirrel there. <laughs> especially around their bums or their their cloaca, as it's called. So a cloaca is um, an all-purpose hole. A lot of animals have it. Birds, um, reptiles. Um, so they will um, urinate. They will um, their excretions poo. They poo out of there, um, and also um, they lay their eggs. Um, and the other thing that sea cucumbers do through their cloaca is they breathe. So they breathe through their butt, which is just amazing. Um, all their respiratory organs are up in there. Um, but also there's a type of fish that lives inside of a sea cucumber's butt, and it's called a pearl fish. And it will swim into, it's long and thin, and it will swim into the sea cucumber's bum. And it lives there. It's safe from predators because not many things eat sea cucumbers. They're pretty gross. Um, and it will then eat the sea cucumbers um, respiratory tree which is in there um, any other organs that are in there um, it's reproductive organs for example um, but the great thing is that sea cucumbers regenerate so there's actually a never-ending supply of food it just grows back again um, and i just thought that was absolutely incredible and i kind of wanted to move into a sea cucumber myself to be honest <laughs> that's great um, so many people are asking why do farts smell bad so the reason that farts smell bad is basically a lot of the gases that are produced by our gut flora and um, by those bacteria and microbes that are in there are smelly gases. Um, methane is one of them. It, we can smell that. It doesn't smell great. But and that, a lot of that will come from eating plants. But when we eat more meat and things like that, when that's digested, it produces compounds which have a lot of sulfur in them. Um, and that's what gives that rotten egg smell. So if you've ever been to a hot spring, you often smell that like fart smell. And that's because they also produce this eggy, you know, sulfurous gas. Um, so that is probably the more traditional fart smell. That's where that comes from. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so why did you decide to write a book about farts? So I don't think I ever really set out to write a book. And I, I think if anyone had said, what were you going to write a book on? It probably wouldn't have been about farts. But um, the story behind the book is that um, I do quite a lot of um, things on Twitter. And back when, quite a while ago, when I I'd, I'd just started, really, um, my brother asked me whether snakes farted. And I didn't know the answer. And I think because I'm a zoologist, that's my job. A lot of people think that, you know, we'll know the answer to these questions, but I didn't. So um, David Steen, who's another person on Twitter, he's a snake expert, I thought, oh, he'll definitely know, he's a snake expert. So I asked him 
he's very unimpressed by the question. Um, but he did answer it. And that kind of spawned uh, a database that we put together um, where all different scientists um, put in their study animals. Um, this was suggested by my co-author Nick, which is how we came to write the book together. Um, and then that spreadsheet ended up in the news. It was on quite a few websites. People, some teachers were using it in the classroom. And then in the middle of all that, our, our publishers wrote to us and they were like, oh, hey, do you want to turn this into a book? And I was like, yes, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was how basically, I don't think it was, a, it just kind of happened, but I'm very glad it did. So am I. I think the whole Twitter community is happy they did. Your book has come up in like four different sessions because anytime we have a session on animals, inevitably does this animal fart is one of the questions. And I always have to be like, you know, I should have, I'd gone over to my bookshelf, grab does it fart, look it up and then be ready for that question in the session. Because often our scientists don't know because you're usually studying not farts in the animal. Yeah. And then you're like, oh man, how do I not know if my own study organism farts or not? Um, yeah, and the spreadsheet does still exist, so you know it's still there for a reference. If people don't want to look through the book, they can always go to the spreadsheet. But we put a lot more info in the book about the specific particular criteria around farts. So you'll learn a lot more if you go in there. But if you need a quick answer, you can always refer back. Cool. Okay, so we have a lot of questions in this uh, question block about different animals. So I think what we should do is I'm going to give you an animal, and you're going to give me a yes no on farts if you can remember. If you don't remember. This is a no stress situation. I don't expect we you to do be only up. have eight animals in the book as well, so it might not be in there. I'll try That's my best. <laughs> Broadly, reptiles. Yeah, yeah, so snakes, yeah, most yes, reptiles. Then. Yeah. Okay, sharks. Some sharks. Some do. Potentially some not all of them. Wow. Yeah, Sam tiger sharks farting everywhere. Wow. Um, chickens. No, unless they, sometimes they get a bit sick and then that can cause them to fart. Oh. But healthy chickens should not be fine. Healthy chickens shouldn't fart. The more you know. Uh, so what do we think? Did the dinosaurs fart? If they led to birds, would we say no? It probably depends on the dinosaur, right? Yeah, I would say some of them probably did. The big herbivorous dinosaurs, I reckon they'd have been farting. Theropod farts had to have been... No joke. The long neck. Yeah, absolutely things. huge. Yeah. Maybe the biggest fart that uh, ever lived on the planet. I mean, I can't imagine a bigger fart. It seems impossible. Um, cows. For sure, yes, right? Yeah, they do. But actually, um, cows burp a lot more than they fart. So earlier, you know, I was saying that some animals produce a lot of gas in their stomach and therefore they burp more. Cows and sheep and goats, their ruminants or ruminants do a lot more burping than farting. So when people say climate change is because of cow farts, it's actually the burps that are doing it. Really? Yeah. That is a hot tip. That's a good piece of information. I did not know that. I thought it was the farts. Wow. Um, how about sea sponges? No, I, I don't think they have enough of a digestive system to fart. I just, yeah. They don't really have any stomach or intestines or burp or mouth. <laughs> so it would be very hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think they could fart either. Um, turkeys? No. Worms? Mm, that's a tricky one. I'm not sure we know if worms fart. Clearly, some more studies needed. Yeah, I personally, I have no idea. Uh, llamas? Yeah, they will do. Monkeys? Yeah, definitely. Pigs? Yep. All really right. smelly as well from first hand uh, experience. <laughs> uh, sloths? No, like sl sloths do not fart. And that was one of the hardest ones to answer for the book. I had to do my own individual research and like write to a lot of people, including an actual scientist that had published on gas production in sloths to find out the entry for the book for that. But no, they don't. They, it's really not good for them if they have gas in their digestive system because they only poo every three weeks. So can you imagine how bad your wind would be after three weeks? Seems impossibly bad. Um, yeah. how about termites? Yeah, so termites do do fart and they actually produce a lot of gas um, because um, they eat leaves basically. Uh, all that methane from breaking down the cellulose has to go somewhere. So yeah, they produce loads of gas. The termite nest is pretty gassy. What about cats? Yeah, definitely. I have so many people write to me and say cats don't fart. And I'm like, have you ever met a cat? Like my cat just like walks on me and then farts on me. <laughs> My cats are not super gassy. I don't know what that's about. 
Um, but I had so a I think growing it, up that most certainly was. So it's not a common occurrence. I don't like. I don't think it's super common. I think like we're more aware of dog bark, but definitely they do. Sure. They must have some sneaky cats. The cat owners the rights to me and say their cat doesn't fart. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's a good question. Why do beans make you fart? Well, again, it's the the it's basically what beans are made up of. So they're quite hard to digest. So that means that when um the bacteria in our guts is, is digesting them, it takes quite a long time. Um and the compounds in them, um, I think it's particularly the skin of the beans, if if I remember correctly. It is is quite tough and it, it means that um so anything with a lot of kind of cellulose or any of those like plant materials that are hard to break down they often produce more gas even if it's not quite smelly um just because those um gut flora are having to work harder basically um is farting good for us yeah in some respects it is you don't want to like hold in all your gas you need to be able to fart otherwise you're going to be in a lot of pain but I think sometimes it's bad for us because you might fart in an embarrassing situation <laughs> and then then people will think you're really rude. So mixed, mixed blessing and a curse, I would say. Um, could you share with us, from Hales, could you share with us some uh, of your favorite ocean animals that fart? Oh, yeah. Um, so I think one of my favorite ones to talk about has to be whales because they do fart. And obviously their farts are quite big because most whales are quite big. Um, but actually there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, like myths about whale farts. But actually they just like fart a little bit at a time and no one had seen a whale fart for ages. And then this one guy, he captured it on camera. So that, that, was, that was pretty good. I really liked the story behind that. It was like the first video image of a whale farting. My YouTube history has forever changed. Just recommend <laughs> farting animals now. <laughs> um, some other great sea creatures, actually like the front of the books, in the UK version, you can see these guys here. These are, um, although they're not actually orange in real life, um, a herring. And um, the paper on herring farting um, won a prize, like for being silly science. It's called an Ig Nobel Prize. Um, and the story behind that was the team were in the lab one day and they were studying um, how herring um, form schools or shoals. Um, and they had all these tanks in the lab of herring. And some scientist was up late one night and they heard this like weird raspberry sounds and they were just like, what is this? Why is our fish making raspberry sounds? I don't know. And when they investigated further, they found that the herring were producing gas from a special um, duct near their tail. And they dubbed this um, expulsion of gas that was making this raspberry sound, this high pitched raspberry sound, they dubbed it um, a fast repetitive tick or an FRT. Um, <laughs> and they found that the more herring in the tank, the more FRTs were produced, and especially when it was dark. So they found out that actually herrings fart to communicate, and that's how they stay in a shoal and stay safe from predators. Oh my god. I've never heard of anything communicating with a fart. I love that so much. Oh, I yeah, so I, there were not that many examples, but it yeah. is one of my favorites. That's amazing. I recently learned that um, there's a bird that will fart to get uh it's prey out of holes so they'll like try to get out the, the prey will come out of the hole to evade the bird fart and then they'll eat the uh the animal that comes out yeah i think there's a lot of stories like that people say the same thing about mongooses and honey badgers that they they will either fart in their prey's hole or they'll go to a bee colony and then they'll fart on it and then all the bees will be stunned and then they will take the honey I don't really know how much truth there is to any of these, but I love them a lot. <laughs> that, that particular fact was from Kaylee Swift. Um, so I lean toward believing that it's true because I think she was, she was teaching a class on wildlife and uh, came up with that one, which is just, who knows, but that sounds great. Um, here's a question from Henry, age six. Some people draw farts as being green. Do farts have a color? No, farts don't have a color. Um, they will always be clear. Um, they're made up of clear gases, so we'd never really be able to see them. Although, I guess maybe if you had a special camera that could detect methane, then you might be able to see a fart. Um, so you defined a fart as being a uh, gas that comes out of your butt, right? So all in, by the definition of the book uh, from Gabriel wants to know, does every animal who farts fart through their butt? And we're saying yes, because that's how we're defining fart, right? In some ways, but... Uh, some animals like mammals they have 
well, like the same kind of butt that we do, they have an anus, but for other animals they have, as I've mentioned, a cloaca, and that's a little bit, it is a little bit different. For us it was more just like anything that was the opposite end of their head, regardless of if that hole was used for other purposes as well. Cool. Um, is it true that you can light a fart on fire? No, I think you'd have to have something horribly wrong with, oh, your, really? with your digestive system if it was that flammable. I, d I don't know, I just, most of it's just normal air, so I, I don't know. I've definitely seen those like videos where people try and light their farts on fire, but I just can't see it being that, that flammable. I've never seen it happen. Yeah, I've never tried, so maybe I'm wrong. I've also never tried, yeah. <laughs> Um, so Chloe, age eight, wants to know, so she asks, uh, how did you get interested in researching farts? But you're not really a fart researcher, you're a wild dog researcher, right? So how did you get involved? How did you become the scientist that you are today? Yeah, so I've always, always, always really wanted to be, um, well, originally I wanted to be a marine biologist when I was a kid, uh, but I got sidetracked by terrestrial animals along the way. Um, and I just kind of followed a very traditional path for that. I went to university and I studied zoology and then I did a master's in conservation uh, and then I did my PhD um, on African wild dogs and climate change um, and then that's led into the job I'm in now which is also looking at African wild dogs and climate change. So yeah I, I guess it's not a particularly exciting story but yeah I just kind of followed what, what I wanted to do in my life and somehow that's worked out so that's that's pretty good and and I just was always inspired by tv shows nature shows um I lived in a big city growing up so that was like mostly my access to that plus zoos and aquariums so that was kind of really what set me on the path and how I ended up where I am now cool um do you know what animal makes the smelliest fart yeah, I do. I asked a lot of people about this and it's actually an animal that I have first-hand experience with. So um, I spoke to a lot of zookeepers. I, my office is in a zoo, um, although obviously I'm working at home at the moment. Um, and um, so I had first-hand access to a lot of zookeepers. And uh, yeah, I asked around and people just, everyone said the worst, the worst culprits are seals and sea lions, like absolutely rancid smelling farts. Um, but I, I do have first-hand experience with this, so I do know how bad it is. So one morning, um, before I started university, I went on um, an expedition to South Georgia, which is just off the coast of Antarctica. And basically, South Georgia is a big rock with some glaciers on it, and then a lot of seals and sea lions and penguins. That's, that's all that's there. And um, one morning, we woke up and our tent like smelled like horrible, really just like absolutely vile. And um, we opened, you know, the first bit, and then we looked in the porch, and there was just like a seal tail end, like under the porch in the porch, and it just been like farting away, and then it was so horrible. <laughs> That's disgusting. Do you think that sea animal farts are worse than terrestrial farts? Yeah, I reckon anything that's eaten fish is probably the worst because that's what they kind of smell like really fishy, like rotten, fishy, eggy, just oh. all of that mixed together is just a horrible combination. So I think there's probably like fish eating as the worst and then animals that eat meat and then herbivores have like the, le the least things to fart, so but like more fart. A lot of air, not much going on in it. Very good. Um, so generally speaking, what percentage of animals that you looked at for the book are farters? So most of the animals we looked at for the book were farting animals. I, I don't know the percentage off the top of my head, but I think part of that's probably to do with which animals we that got submitted to the spreadsheet, because we had a lot of mammals, and most mammals, apart from sloth, um, apart from sloths, fart. Mm -hmm. So I think most animals probably don't fart, because when you think about animals, a lot like insects or quite um, simple animals, which don't really have much of a digestive system. But in terms of... Um, what are often called like higher order animals like um, mammals, reptiles, um, most birds don't fart but yeah mo a, a lot of mammals and reptiles and those kind of animals do. Um, so while most of the animals in the book do fart I think most animals in the world probably don't. Cool. Um, Audrey age nine wants to know if humans are louder farters than animals generally speaking. I think it depends on the animal. Like elephants, they got some some really loud farts. Really? <laughs> Zebras, any horses, you know, if you've been around horses. So 
I would put us probably somewhere in the middle. I think bigger animals are going to fart louder, but smaller animals probably. Do any animal farts smell good? I'm going to say no, but I haven't tested that extensively. So I think someone needs to go out there and do that. We have to do that work. It's very important work that needs to be done. Inquiring minds want to know. Um, so could you uh, go over what all your three books are about? It's yeah, so, of yeah, of course. So Does It Fart is about, um, we've got 80 animals in there and we talk about whether they fart or not and you get a little bit of extra information about each species. Um, and then True or Poo, which is our second book, I put it here, this is the UK version. We've got some US versions as well, they're slightly different cover. It's covering all bases. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so True or Poo is about um, kind of gross animal habits in general, and it's a mixture of like truths and myths. So there's a lot of common myths in there um, that we debunk, and then also a lot of amazing facts that actually turn out to be true. Um, and then we've got Believe It or Snot, which is our most recent one, which is all about snot and slime. And we ranked the definitive ranking of slimy animals from the slimiest to the least slime. That's awesome. Um, so my screen is currently frozen. Oh, good. Okay, we're back to not being frozen. Um, we're getting still a lot of just like, does this one? Oh, what will your next book be about if you write another book? Um, undecided as of yet but I think something that we've been toying about for quite with for quite a long time is um, maybe like some life advice from the animal kingdom like how to live your life according to the animal kingdom with some some life tips in there. Nice um, my buddy wrote a uh, like it was around Valentine's Day and he wrote like a um, this was Zach Martellucci uh, if you know him he wrote uh, like dating advice from the animal kingdom and it was uh, not good advice for humans uh, but still funny um let's see if a person didn't fart for a long time would they explode um, yeah but i think that today we have medical interventions that they so you could go to the doctors and they would help you at this point but there are animals so there's a little fish that lives in mexico and sometimes they get so full of gas from eating algae that they pop up to the surface of the water and then they explode. So, oh my god! That's wild. Um, cool. So let's see, we still have a good amount of time. That's good. Sorry, I have a lot of uh, spam in the questions, so it's hard to find the actual questions. Um, do we know if any other animals other than humans find farts funny? Yeah, so we actually looked into this quite a lot because we thought that maybe apes um, especially would find farts funny but actually it turns out that animals just have no shame or qualms or really care about farts at all the only instances really that we found um, of animals really interacting with farts was reports that ferrets sometimes scare themselves by farting <laughs> um, but yeah no no other animal seems to find farts funny like people do nice are any farts actively toxic So actually, there is one animal that basically does have a toxic fart, and that animal is the beaded lacewing. Um, and they're kind of they're a small insect. They've got transparent wings. They're they're pretty nondescript, but they lay larvae um, near ants' nests, and the larvae go into the ants' nest, and they're kind of disguised. They're all happy up down in there, and um, they will then um, or termite nests as well, and they will go in there and. They actually eat termites, but they're not that much bigger than a termite, so it's pretty hard for them to do. So what they do is they fart on the termite, and they produce a special chemical called an alimone, and this only affects termites, and um, that alimone um, basically paralyzes them. And after a while, the termite will die, and then the beaded lacewing eats the termite. Um, so yeah, some farts are toxic to termites at least, although I haven't come across any that are toxic to humans. So that's another example of a predatory fart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Cool. Um, gosh, sorry, this is really disruptive. Um, 
I guess we'll ask you all, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm going to ask you the question that we ask everyone. One, um, what is something that you wish that everyone in the world knew about your area of expertise? And what is something that you wish everybody knew about literally anything? So, oh, that's a really tricky question. I guess in terms of, I'm, I'm going to kind of give two answers. What, one is like more about my area of expertise. Um, with regards to um, climate change impacts on biodiversity. And one thing I really wish people knew about that is that actually habitat loss is a much bigger problem than climate change. That sounds silly, like I'm downplaying my work, but habitat, if it wasn't for habitat loss, then climate change wouldn't be such a big deal for a wildlife at least, um, because they'd be able to move into new habitat. But what I really wish that people knew about art is that Actually, there's a lot that we don't know about so many animals, to the extent that we don't know if they fart or not, even though that's quite basic information about their digestive system. Um, and actually, this kind of thing is quite um, helpful in terms of all sorts of things, like for domestic animals, um, their digestive, knowing about their digestive systems is helpful um, for providing us with food, um, for like preventing pollution, um, and then for wild animals, just kind of knowing more about them, there's so many knowledge gaps. Um, so while it might seem silly on the face of it, sometimes this information can be quite useful. Um, and then what's one thing I wish people knew in general, anything? Hmm. I guess I would probably say, although this is still animal related and vaguely related to my research. Um, but I really wish that people knew that lions are really overrated. <laughs> like, I, like, I see a lot of lions when I'm out on field work and everyone always wants to go and see a lion when they're on safari. But actually there's so many other cool animals out there like African wild dogs in Africa. I wish they got some more love. So, yeah. Nice. Um, so, I know you mentioned that the first recorded thing uh, in English, the first recorded song had farts in it, but do you know um, if early humans uh, found farts funny, like early cultures, or if there's an another question related, is, is there any culture that you're aware of um, that doesn't really care about farts? So when we were looking into this, actually, it was pretty universal. I, I mean, there were... Humans aren't my area of study, so I can't say this definitively, but we didn't really find any reports of humans not finding farts either funny or rude. You know, some cultures don't find them funny at all. They just find them really rude. But it seems like in, it's at least rude in every culture and funny in, in most. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, can we buy your book? So what countries can we buy your books in? Oh, hmm. Okay, you can definitely get them in the US, Canada, and the UK. Uh, I'm going to have to remember because they're in 11. Does it part is in 11 languages and true or two is now in five, I think. So um, a lot of countries <laughs> is what I'm going to say. Um, China, Japan, Germany, Finland, uh, the Netherlands. Um, there's way more Italy. Um, did I say France? Yeah, France. Um, there's, there'll be a few more as well. I can't remember them off the top of my head. Um, and I know that the kids book is available in Hebrew as well. Awesome. Um, do you know what the largest fart volumetrically would be? So I think it's difficult because we always thought that it was a whale, right? Because whales are really big and so I think they probably do have the largest volume fart, but they kind of just fart really slowly like a trickle. So it doesn't, doesn't all come out at once. Um, a lot of animals, the, how they fart depends on, um, we have like a muscle in our butts called the sphincter. Most mammals have that. And if an animal, and a lot of reptiles, and if an animal has one of those that's kind of weak, it means it will just like all come out in a long, Dream rather than grass where fart comes out a bit more explosively. So I think for whales, although they probably have like the biggest volume in total, probably the animal that lets the most out all at once is probably like an elephant. Awesome. I just realized that Nick is here. Do we want to uh, bring Nick into the conversation? I didn't... Why not? I'm always happy for Nick to be here. <laughs> Great. Yeah, because it's, yeah, I just, uh, 
didn't want to take two of your time, but if he's going to be here anyway, I'm going to bring yeah, him Yeah, he did say he was going to tune in. I was like, oh, no. Oh, even well, more to, like, co yeah, and be part of the conversation. Um, okay, so I just bumped him up to a panelist. My computer is having some issues today. Um, so I am totally frozen. You are in a very flattering position. Am I really saying God? Maybe that was sarcasm, though. Um, so whenever Nick arrives, I'm going to ask him um, what his favorite fart story was. And I'd like to hear both of your opinions of, like, uh, what the book writing process was like for you and how you kind of get involved in that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it says you've stopped my video, but I'm fine. With oh, I will, um, oh. I'll fix that. <laughs> we don't want to see you anyway, Nick. Well, I'm, I'm also in my pajamas. I wasn't planning on being... Are you uh, stage ready, Nick? If not, we can just have you not on screen. That's fine. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you the option. Oh, hey, you can oh, call Amanda. Yeah, there's my salamander. Yeah, so uh, writing process, Nick. We can chat about how 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 much time we talk without actually having met each other. It was a lot, uh, especially in the early stages, because uh, the whole book writing process was new to both of us. So it was, um, you know. Both of us were just like, so what are we doing? <laughs> and kind of just bouncing ideas off of each other. A lot of it was just editing as we were going um, and be like, oh yeah, I like this kind of style or this, this, uh, this direction. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think we were pretty organized about it, weren't we? Because we kind of, the first step was deciding which animals to include. So we tried mm -hmm. to get a variety of animals and like, more um yeah like a yeah like a mix of animals so that we had different things to say about them then we mm -hmm. randomized the allocation of those animals of who was going to write the first draft of which and then we'd kind of write write those and then swap so that the other mm -hmm. person would go through them that was that was kind of mostly how how we did it and then collaborated on like the intro and the glossary and things yep so how much time not did Google documents from deciding to write the book to publishing the book. How much time was that? It's only a so, couple of months, right? Yeah, like the first tweet was January 2016. Mm -hmm. That the first when that was the first Twitter exchange. <laughs> then I think it came out in the UK in the the October uh -huh. of 2016. And we got the book deal in like I want to say like April. March or April, so yeah, it was a really, really quick turnaround. <laughs> turnaround. Yeah. And Nick was like quite close near the end of his PhD, like when I was, I was kind of bang in the middle, so it was uh, pretty intense. It's a lot of writing. Wow. Um. So, what is your favorite fart story, Nick? My favorite fart story. Um. I like in terms mentioned. of animal life, not necessarily like a time you personally <laughs> farted and it happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of question we're asking today. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, so the, um, I think Danny mentioned obviously the, the sea cucumber because I don't know that you can talk to Danny without her mentioning sea cucumbers. They're um, cool. That's good. They are cool. They are. More, and more people need to know about how cool sea cucumbers are because that's not a thing everybody knows. Everybody no. knows about, you know, the like, Animal Kingdom stars, the giraffes, etc. But mm -hmm. sea cucumber needs more love. It does. I, I very much wholeheartedly agree. Um, so here's the question: Do any plants? Do plants have any like fart analogous type things? I want to say no. I mean, they excrete gas. Sure. Kind of, yeah, but I mean, we breathe out gas as well, so it's true. That's, that's more of a respiration thing. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. So our questions have kind of wrapped up. Um, we've got a lot of repeats still here. Um, so okay, where can we buy your books? Um, not in terms of country, but in terms of like uh, store location. Um, and do you have any advice for future authors? uh out there so if anyone's uk based 
um, most independent bookstores it's really always really whatever country you're in it's always great like independent bookstores will always be happy to get books in for you so you can ask i know you can't pop in but a lot are doing delivery now um and then also waterstones wh smith and then nick do you want to run through the us based ones yeah um uh, barnes and noble and again independent bookstores um are there any other big book chains or is Barnes & Noble the only one? Barnes & Noble is pretty much the only big book chain we have. Yeah. Um, and every yeah, Barnes & Noble I've been to in the last like three years has had either Desert Fart or one mm -hmm. of them, or, or um, believe it or not. Uh, I, always I actually found them in an anarchist bookshop in Philadelphia as well. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, and you can also ask if you, there's a book that you think um, more people should be reading, you can always ask your independent bookstores uh, mm -hmm. to order it for you. And then when you do, um, they kind of get the idea that that's a book of interest for people. And so that can help get more people get the book in front of more people's eyes. Um, but and also you can, no judgment here if people want to get them off Amazon, especially with things as they are at the moment, you can get them on Amazon as well. Yeah. And a lot of independent right. bookstores are definitely shipping um, yes. to help support our local stuff. Um, alrighty. So with that, actually, Nick, do you want to answer the question, what's one thing you wish everybody knew about your field of study? And maybe tell us what it, it, exactly it is that you study in addition to writing. And then um, what um, you wish everybody knew completely unrelated to the science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, both Danny and I, our research questions are fairly similar. Uh, where our study species are quite different. Uh, so my main focus is on Appalachian salamanders. And recently, uh, so I'm a postdoc at uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, I've started projects uh, involving reptiles and amphibians in the Florida Panhandle, mainly involving uh, conservation of those species and how management affects their populations. Um, so one thing for my stuff and, you know, Appalachian salamanders are near and dear to my heart, um, that there are species like, oh, oh, there it is there. This species right here, <laughs> this is a red salamander. Uh, they are lungless. They breathe through their skin completely. Uh, not like, um, and for some species, there is more of their weight than all of their small mammals and birds combined in the same area, even though these salamanders are only, you know, a couple centimeters uh, long. So there's just so many of them in the woods, uh, mostly underground. Um, I think, isn't it true that the United States is the uh, country with the highest diversity of salamanders? That we know of, the Southern Appalachians, known as the salamander capital of the world. Uh, as far as we know, uh, yeah, there's more salamander species there, which is awesome. Yeah, and it's salamander season, right? It's getting there, yeah. Uh, we've had some nice, warm, rainy nights, so it's been, depending on where you are, uh, right. especially if you're up north, it's definitely the start of it. So if you live um, somewhere east of the Mississippi, or maybe even west, I don't know. How would you go about finding a salamander in your local environment? Um, so it depends on the species. Uh, so for some of the terrestrial species, you'd find them uh, underneath rocks and logs during the day. And of course, if you do turn a rock and log, always replace it because that's someone's home. Um, you can also find them in the streams. Uh, usually nice, clear, clean, fast moving, or somewhat fast moving streams. Um, there are some species that breed in the ponds, but they're kind of, uh, you have to find them at the right time of the year, usually at the very beginning of the spring. Cool. I know I've been going um, on nature walks by myself just to get myself out of the house, and there are salamanders everywhere <laughs> right now. They are like every rock I, or log I flip, I usually see an eastern redback or a slime. Mm -hmm. They're out in force right now. Yes. Um, okay, so we try to keep these to be about 45 minutes and we're just about there. So uh, is there anything that you two would like to plug, places that we can find you on the internet, um, anything at all? 
Yeah, so I guess mostly going to plug our books. Um, it's great <laughs> if people buy them and support us by buying them. Um, and hopefully you'll have some fun reading them and learn something along the way. Um, you can always find me on Twitter. Um, it's at Danny Rabiotti. Um, and yeah, feel free to give me a follow on there as well. How about you, Nick? Um, same. Um, I don't have any other anything else to plug other than the books we've already written. We do have, I don't know if you mentioned it, Danny, the kids version of True oh, yeah. Who is out this summer, uh, June, uh, in Thank both God. the US and the UK. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. Um, my handle is at plethodonnick. Uh, so plethodon is a genus of salamanders, and my name is Nick, and I like puns. Awesome. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Erin, for signing as always. Um, we are back here next week. We have sessions every day of the week. Um, I can actually screen share the schedule. That's what we have going on. Um, next week, we've got political science on Monday, ants on Tuesday, uh, zookeeping, which would be I mean, these are all going to be really good, but Jake is just so funny and wonderful. And so that is going to be great. Corvids with Kaylee Swift, which is another really awesome uh, science communicator. And the Ice Age with Jacqueline Gill on Friday. So it's going to be a good week. You can always check us out at skypeascientist.com. Um, and thank you, Danny and Nick, for taking the time to be with us today. Yeah, thanks. thanks for having us. All right, awesome. Then we'll see you next week. Thanks again, Aaron. Bye.